Here we go. So good morning, everybody. Thanks for jumping on. Um, just a reminder, we're doing this every Tuesday morning, um, same time um, here in 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, just some great ways to mastermind a little bit, you know, take your business up, keep up ahead of this market. Crazy market out there, crazy times, whatever. But uh, the good agents get through it. The good agents adjust. You just keep learning and putting more tools in your toolbox and you get through this kind of stuff and you come out way ahead is what happens. So anyway, guys, um, we appreciate being on here. Just a couple of housekeeping things. If you can leave your cameras on, turn your cameras on if you can. Um, just participate with us here. Um, just keep yourself muted, especially if you have background noise. Just know that we'll hear everything. Uh, in the background, we will open it up along the way, um, you know, for some Q&A, um, you know, comments, discussion, that kind of stuff. But uh, Andrew Ironmonger uh, is going to be leading us today. So Andrew's been in the business for, what did you say, eight years, seven years, eight years, yeah, Andrew? A little, little over eight years, yeah. A little over eight years, got a team down there uh, on track to do about 200 deals this year, him and his team, they're doing some big things. Um, icon agent here at EXP two times now, is that right? Yep. Well, it's here. Yeah. Very cool. So why don't you go and tell a little bit of your story and then uh, take us in here. Okay. Appreciate you doing this, Andrew. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So uh, my story, I'm prior military. Military moved me here to good old sunny Florida, uh, right in the panhandle. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't go back to Podunk, New Mexico after that. Um, I was from a small town before. Uh, so I decided to start my real estate business here. Um, I was a massive introvert. I had three different people tell me, hey, dude, you shouldn't do this bad idea. You know, literally, they, they didn't even know each other. And they told me, not good. Let's not do this. Um, first uh, first brokerage I ever joined was Keller Williams. Loved them. It was great. Uh, I took my first disc test, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And my broker uh, looked me dead in the eyes and said, you'll be somebody's assistant or out of the business in six months. Um, but go ahead and try it. And uh, just sort of laughed and I was like, all right, I'm not one of those people that, uh, you know, can just not do something once I put my mind to it. So I decided to go for it. And, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I joined ERA for a while. And then about two years ago, um, I joined EXP. Now I should have joined EXP two years prior to that. I'm sure everybody here knows that, you know, knows those stories or feels that same way. Um, somebody was trying to recruit me. I, I didn't uh, jive with my recruiter that well. And so I didn't join. And I had a business partner that didn't want to join either. But I eventually came over and it's been uh, pretty good since. Very Last cool. year, we did 138 sales. We should do closer to probably like 180 or 200 right now. We're kind of starting off a little bit slower than I hoped. Uh, but that's kind of the background on me. Um, I've used the uh, DISC assessment my entire career. Um, being a team leader, it's very helpful for me to use it as, uh, I, I call it an energy management tool. Um, it's nothing more than that, as you'll see here in my slides. And as we start going through some of this stuff, that's really all it is, is an energy management tool. You know, that you can have a high CS personality, SC personality, or any combination you can think of, and they can be successful in real estate, trust me. And, uh, and so um, it's just about, you know, where's your energy going to be? How long are you going to be able to stand at a certain task and things like that? So that's some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. And uh, if you guys are good with it, we'll just jump right in. Yep. Let's go if for anybody, it. Uh, can you guys throw in the chat comment um, how long you've been in real estate so I can help kind of tailor some of the stuff that I put in here? If you guys don't mind doing that for me. Three years, seven years, 20 investing. Nice, Kelly. 20 years, Lisa, 22. Okay, so we got some veterans. We got some new folks. Gwen, two months. One and a half years, eight investing. Nice. Two years, not active, few sales. Okay, so some newbies, some some definite experts. 38, Cheryl, good Lord. Cheryl, you've been doing this for a while. <laughs> Brian, two and a half years. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Four years, new construction, right on. That's a good thing to be in right now. 24, 24 Kathy Carter. Kathy, how are you? All right, I'm going to go and share my screen here. Um, a lot of these uh, slides, this is generally something I do in person. Um, so we'll be skipping over some of them. So you high C personalities, don't freak out when I do that, please. Are you guys able to see my screen here? If it'll go to, oh, there it goes. It wants to go on the wrong screen. I wonder if I could swap this over. I think I had this issue last time. One of these days, I'm going to figure this out. Uh, here, let me stop sharing and I'll just go to the other side. 
All right, there we go. Can you guys see it full screen now? Yeah, there you go. Awesome, you guys rock. Okay, cool. The disc personality. So we're going to go through this in detail. Um, there's one thing that I want to start off with. There's an adapted style and a natural style. So as we go through all of these and you're hearing certain things, uh, just keep that in mind that this isn't always going to be the case. And, and these are all, um, everything we're going to go over is what I call an idiosyncrasy, right? So like you may be a high D personality, you may have some of the traits we're going to talk about, but you might not. Okay, so it's not an end all be all. So just keep that in mind. When you're looking at the disc assessment, um, do we have a lot of people, can you raise your hand or put the little hand icon? If you guys have already taken the disc, you know what you are, you've done it in the last six months, any of that? Got it, okay. So there's a natural, uh, we got one, okay. So we got a, a natural and an adaptive style. If you guys take most of the discs, you'll see a, a, a colored version and then a grayed out version. The grayed out version is normally um, either your adapted or your natural style, depending on which test you're taking. So all that means is your adapted style is gonna be how you respond under pressure, how you begin to behave when you feel like you're being watched and your learned skills based on your environment, okay? We'll talk about this as just setting the baseline for you. And then your natural style is your gut instinct. This is how you're generally going to behave when you're comfortable and the natural feeling based on your life experience or your natural feeling behavior, right? So behavior is simply the way somebody acts and it's their observable habits and beliefs. It's not good or bad, it just, it, it just is. So as we're going through this, as we go, oh, you're a high D, you're a high I, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but neither does a low I. It's just where you're at on the spectrum and how you're gonna respond in situations. And then, as I mentioned, some will come naturally and some will come adapted. So it's not your intelligence. It's not your values, it's not your work ethic, your skills, experience, education, training, motivation. It's none of that. This is purely just your standard behavior and how you're going to react in situations. A lot of times when I teach this, some people will be like, oh, well, I'm, uh, you know, this, so I'm not going to be good at these things. No, that has nothing to do with this. This is a skill. It's nothing like that. It's purely just behavior. So when we're talking about a high D, generally we do this, like I said, in person, we kind of fill this out as we go. So for those of you that like to write and learn things, if you guys want, you can go and write this out, you know, on a big piece of paper, just draw four blocks, but D, I, S, C, if you wanted to follow along that way. If not, it's all right. You can just go and follow along with words, really whatever you guys are comfortable with. Just know a lot of people that write it, you know, they tend to uh, learn it a little bit better. So I'm going to start talking on the sides of these right now. So if you guys are writing this down right over the top between the D and the I, um, or if you're just imagining, just imagine the words fast and aggressive up here. Okay. Then on this side right here for the I and the S, I want you to write relationships slash people oriented. And underneath here for the C and the S, you've got steady and cautious. And then here on the left side, you've got thinking and task oriented. So what this means is basically these two that, that you're drawing on, whatever lines that you're drawing on, that's how those behaviors act on a base level. So if you're looking you know, from 10,000 feet up, that's how they're generally going to be described. The Ds and the Is are fast and aggressive. It's how they think, okay? The Is and the Ss are relationship or people-oriented types of people. So the I and the S like people. That's what they would, they base their decisions around people if your dominating trait is there. Your C and your S is steady and cautious. And then your D and your C tend to be thinking or task-oriented. They're the people that wanna do the task more than they wanna help the people do the task, right? So as you're looking at this from a 10,000 view foot up, that's kind of like the main. So you can start categorizing people based on their behavior just with that alone. And then you start going into some of these deeper, and we'll talk about these a little bit further. I just wanna give you guys kind of a, an overall view on this. A high D's keywords uh, would be dominant, direct, and decisive. So when you guys are thinking of a high D, these are the people that generally, they, they don't necessarily need all the information, they're direct, they're decisive, they're quick with their actions. Hey, let's go ahead and move on on this task, right? So you can give them a small piece of the puzzle and they can generally move forward with it. Their key emotion is generally quick to anger. And they're motivated by challenge and bottom line. So they really love challenges. They like the bottom line results. It doesn't matter how you got there. It's that the results are there. And their motto, if you had to give them one, would be just do it. 
The high D's dominant fear is generally being taken advantage of or wasting time. This will come in handy when we talk about how to interact with a high D. Remember, they don't like wasting time. They want the bottom line oriented stuff. Now, a lot of personalities probably on this call fall in these two categories. These are the two most popular for real estate agents, I've noticed, the D's and the I's. Um, so if you don't know what you are, um, you, know, you can probably figure it out by the time we're done with all this. So high I's, um, their, their, their keywords are influencing, interactive, and impulsive. I know you're thinking impulsive, that sounds bad. No, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just key emotions, right? And the key, or key, key words rather, the key emotion is optimism. Your high eyes tend to be a little bit more optimistic. It's part of the reason why I think they make great real estate agents because high eyes are great at getting kicked in the mouth and just continuing to go forward, right? And same with the high D personality. Your motto is you can do it. I think I skipped one there. You're generally motivated by flattery and recognition. So for you team leaders out there or anybody like that um, that has somebody underneath them that might be a high eye, keep that in mind. Flattery and recognition. They're the ones that they want to get the big old trophy. And then their dominant fear is generally rejection. I'm going to go down here to the um, S here. The S is keywords here at the bottom are stable, steady, and secure. I call the high S is like the mama bear. Their key emotion is that they actually generally hide their emotions. They try to be as motion, emotionless as possible generally, right? They're motivated by benefits. So again, you've got somebody working for you. These are the people that want the, you know, 401k plan and the, uh, you know, dental and all the other stuff we don't have here in real estate. Uh, the motto is better safe than sorry. And their dominant fear is loss of security or change. Highest does not like a lot of change. Then you've got the high C personality here. Their keywords are compliant, correct, and controlled. Their key emotion is fear or risk aversion. They're generally motivated by correctness. Their motto is they want it done right, so do it right. Their biggest fear is criticism. So again, something to note, if you've got employees underneath you or other agents that might be a high C personality, make sure that if you are criticizing them, you're doing them in private, particularly is kind of important there. <clears throat> so to kind of wrap this all up, I like to use a little analogy um, called the, the elevator, right? So if you've got all four personalities stepping onto an elevator, right? We're gonna go to the high D. The high D is going to be the one that steps on the elevator and just keeps hitting the button over and over and over. They're like, let's go, let's go. Let, okay, cool. All right, we're, we're, we're good. The high I is the one that gets on and then, you know, the elevator's right here, it closes and they turn around and they just want to talk. They're just going to talk to everybody on the elevator. They need to have a conversation, probably a good chance it's a high I or just maybe somebody that's talkative, all right? And then the high S is going to be the one that kind of gets on, make sure everybody's all right. Somebody's running to it. They stick their hand out. They hold the elevator. They're like, come on, come on. We got you. We're waiting. And then the high C is the one that gets on, doesn't really say much, looks at the max load capacity and starts looking around and going, we got 2,000 pounds. We got eight people here. They're about 200 pounds of pop. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Does anybody have any questions on that? Kind of a rough overview there. <clears throat> Um, we're not going to break out into groups because we can't really do that in this situation. Uh, do I have high D's out there? Anybody raise their hand? Jeff, big surprise. <laughs> so the high D personality, their oral language. And again, um, I'm going to emphasize this like three times throughout this um, program here. Um, these are not all set in stone. These are just general behaviors. Okay. So in conversation, they tend to be more of a fast talker. They like bigger hand gestures than a lot of people do. They're generally strong and confident. Great eye contact. High Ds have great eye contact, sometimes too much eye contact for certain people. They're generally loud and forceful, and I don't mean that in a bad way. They just like to project their opinion, project what they're doing. Um, a big tip with a high D, if you're able to, don't go back in time in the conversation. It drives them nuts. If you need to go back 10 steps for something that they did a while ago, it's going to drive them a little bit crazy. Be short, sweet, to the point, and try to keep their focus as much as possible. And this is just oral language. We're getting a body language, all that stuff here. So we've got the, the high D body language 
think on a home tour, they're the ones that's walking quickly, right? So if you're doing a home tour with somebody you're trying to figure out, if they're just straight to the rooms that they care about, looking around, going to the next one, good chance they're a high B personality. Um, generally, when you're doing like a consult with them, they're sitting forward in an alert posture. Um, they want to get to the point. Uh, you'll notice what I call polyphasic, well, what they call polyphasic thinking when you're talking to somebody. ID has a tendency when they've lost interest, they polyphase that, that glazed look over that they get on their face. Um, that's the common of a high D that's losing interest, right? Their objections generally come, or, come out quickly. So think when you're in a listing appointment, if you ever walk in and they go, you know, let's go ahead and sit down at the table. They're trying to control the situation. They sit down, they go, you know, none of this matters if we can't agree on a price. Chances are you're sitting across the table from a high D, most likely, right? So their objections are going to come out quickly. Tip, try to be direct with them. When an objection comes up, handle it with confidence. So my favorite one with ID, especially with like a commission um, response, you guys have probably heard this all the time, but it works particularly well for a ID is, hey, will you lower your commission? No. Next question. Move on. You're done. That's your value. You're worth X percent, whatever it is, and just go ahead and move on from that. It's not always going to work, but it will a good chunk of the time. The high D tends to be direct and self-reliant. They tend to skew on the side of a high risk taker. They have a desire to change the environment around them. And they have a great sense of urgency. It needs to happen faster. Life is short, right? As a high D, if you are a high D yourself and you're working with a high I, here's a couple of tips. Just allow the high I to verbalize a little bit more and allow a bit more time for decisions to be made. Remember, you're making quicker decisions. A high eye has to think about people in the process. You only have to think about things. It's gonna take you a little bit shorter of a time. And then as a high D, you need to lighten up just a little bit with a high eye. Let them talk a little bit, let them get it out of their system, especially if you're in conflict resolution or something like that, which we'll talk about here in a bit. As a high D, if you're working with a high S, you're gonna to need to slow down the pace, all right? The D and the S are one of the biggest ones that clash. You know, um, and a lot of it, I think, is just because they're a little bit opposite of a viewpoint on a lot of things, right? So you need to slow down your pace. Um, and then if you catch yourself overpowering the high S, um, you, or you may catch yourself overpowering the high S because of your sense of urgency. This happens quite often. It's actually where I think a lot of that clashing comes from. And when working with the high C, slow down a little bit in order to successfully communicate with the high C. You'll need to give a little bit more information than normal. So kind of, you know, throw out a little bit more numbers if you've got them, throw out a little bit more information. Don't talk too personally, be too personally or be too pushy. Even if you've got the greatest product in the world, if you're recruiting, let's say, or if you're in a sales situation, it doesn't really matter. If you're a little bit too pushy with a high C, you're going to get put in a block and they're just going to be like, that's not a block I want anything to do with. Okay. So it's going to be very hard to get out of that. Both a high D and a C have a desire to use time wisely and control their environment. So use that kind of to your advantage. We have any high eyes? Couple, okay. Steve, nice, okay. So the high eyes oral language, they tend to be an expressive thinker. Um, charismatic, think happy smile. They're, they're the ones that like the tips of the corner of the mouth tend to go up just a little bit more than everybody else's. We're not really sure why, right? They talk with their hands, very gesture, very open gesture. They tend to laugh easy and with a lot of enthusiasm, kind of that deep belly or chest laugh that you hear, wide range of facial expressions. It's very easy generally to tell a high eye how they're feeling, even if they don't want you to know, right? It's just who they are. That's uh, the veil that they put on, right? They love for you to be excited, enthusiastic. So keep conversations lively, use bold statements, new ideas, and bring humor into the mix as much as possible. High eyes body language will tend to be arms open. Their heart is typically open as they gesture, right? So think as if they're trying to bring that into them. Um, they want to move energetically throughout walkthroughs. So this is for you guys that are doing like walkthroughs, trying to figure out who's in charge or what personality types they are. You're going to walk through. They're going to be the ones that have a story on everything. Oh my gosh, this would be so great. I could have my friends over here. We'd sit on this back patio. We can, oh, we could be sipping our margaritas, that kind of thing. Um, the high eyes is... Uh, notorious for that polyphasic thinking that we talked about before that kind of glossed over look that generally means what I've noticed is that they have a story or an anecdote something they want to share about the situation that you're doing so this is particularly important whenever you're building rapport with somebody when you see that look go over somebody's eyes back off and let them talk and that kind of goes for all of the personality types kind of a standard human behavior thing 
um, but you'll tend to see it on a high eye when they're just ready to jump at the next story. So try to be lively with your body language and your voice, and then hit on items that will engage others in some sort of way. And this is from, I've got old slides here. I just realized it's got text DRA stuff on there, but anything in your, in your platform that involves other people, right? And this could be as simple as explaining how the back patio is going to be great for the hundreds of friends they're going to make moving into this area. Or it could be, you know, hey, we're going to blast this all over social media. Your house is going to be everywhere. Everybody's going to love it. It's beautiful. You know, that kind of thing. Touch on that stuff. They tend to like it. The high eye tend to be very people oriented. They're generally very verbal and persuasive. Excuse me. Uh, they have creative high risk ideas, but a lot of them aren't going to be carried out. These are the idea people, right? High eyes tend to be a little bit more creative than most. They enjoy people and having fun, and they tend to ask a lot of questions. You guys ever see that person when you're out on, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, conferences or anything like that? And there's just that one person that's constantly asking questions, constantly jumping and throwing in their two cents, tends to be a high eye most of the time, right? There's nothing wrong with it. When, when you, if you are a high eye working with a high D, you're going to need to be a little bit more direct. So be cognizant of this. You need to get to the point a little bit quicker. The stories need to be shorter or cut off completely. If you can allow the high D to carry the conversation, particularly if you're in a point where you're negotiating or something like that, feel, feel like they're in control. Give them that feeling. And then work on asking more bottom line oriented questions instead of just telling the answers. We're working with a high S, um, talk less and ask more questions to build the relationship. And then be careful about being too pushy or enthusiastic with a high S. We're working with a high C, slow down and keep a tight rein on your emotions. Provide necessary data and then try to keep the personal talk down. In fact, just assume it's not allowed. Depending on your relationship with them, it might not be. But a lot of high Cs, they just want to be inside their little bubble. They don't want to talk to anybody, right? At least not about their personal stuff. The high S. Do I have any high S's here? I'm not seeing any movement or anything, which isn't super uncommon. If you guys can hit the little button, because I don't think it switches for me for the little hand up. Any high S's? Nope. Got it. So I'll go through them a little bit quicker. Um, in high S, the oral language, they tend to be friendly and warm. They take a relaxed pace. They tend to be slow and thoughtful in their communication. They're quiet, they're attentively listening, and they generally have a little bit more of a reserved posture. You know, um, this kind of like the arms crossed, standing maybe arms sideways, uh, legs crossed is very common, things like that. Although they may come across like they don't have something to say in the moment, they're often being very polite, right? The highest is, is used to sitting back and listening and watching everything before they speak. So ask about their hobbies, trying to build rapport um, or their weekend before asking them to do a favor for you. We've got a high, high S on our team. She's not here right now, um, but this is one of the things that I actually have to get my D's and my S's to do. So my high D agent personalities with my high S um, TC, I have to go, hey, talk to her about her kid for four minutes. You've got three, I actually told one of my agents, you have three minutes of personal talk before you get into business. Because if not, she's not feeling the love, you know what I mean? And it solved a ton of problems just from that little tiny tip, right? High ass body language tends to be reserved posture, laying back, legs folded is common. I kind of mentioned this a second ago. If they're standing, they'll often guard themselves. You'll see their ventricle side protected, right? So this is a body language thing. I'm not going to go too far into it. But there's a great book called um, How Everybody Thinks by Joe Navarro. Very good. Um, when you kind of tailor these two, you actually see a lot of similarities in how people do things. But anyway, they tend to guard themselves, you know, their arms crossed in front of them, you know, arms crossed this way, what have you, at least when they're not in full rapport with somebody. When you say something right, their smile will subtle, but it'll, it'll be really subtle, like almost unnoticeable in certain situations, but it generally tends to linger a little bit longer. And then we'll likely ask questions to provide security. That's one of the big things that they care about. So watch their eyes. They're very used to listening and rarely interrupt. You can generally tell if you're, if you're watching carefully enough while you're speaking, when they've got some more information on a topic that they want to run by you. So build a relationship 
relationship points often so that when a tough conversation comes up, they don't feel bombarded and overwhelmed. I promise you, if you guys have a high S that's messing up or not doing what they need to do and you just bring it right to them, they're going to feel overwhelmed. It's going to, there's going to be, there might be some tears. Okay. I've seen this time and time again. So try to build those relationship points up. So this way, when this does happen, they know that you care about them right before any of that stuff happens. And they love to, they love security. So build that into your consult, your Supra, CBS. Hey, this is super safe for your family. You need this code. You need a license. No, no, no. All this other stuff, security systems, ring systems, any of that stuff. Point that out during your consultations, walkthroughs, any of that stuff. And it'll really help. They tend to be um, associated as being warm and very people oriented. So again, I kind of mentioned before the mama bear, if you will. They generally crave stability. And these team tend to be your peacekeepers and peacemakers, okay? So you've got, a, you've got a conflict going on, throw an S in the middle of it that has a little bit of experience and they'll find a way to kind of keep the peace from everybody. Systematic and methodical and they don't generally take unnecessary risks. If you're working with a high D as a high S, they have trouble communicating because the high S prefers a slower, more calculated pace and the D prefers the faster pace. Remember what I was talking about before, fast and aggressive, slow and cautious, steady and cautious, right? So the high S may have a tendency to go along with the high D even when they disagree just to create a little bit of harmony. This is very good for you know any team leaders or anything like that. You're going to watch this happen. The, the D is going to steamroll the S and the S is going to go, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Right. I'm just going to I'm going to I'll do extra for you than I will for anybody else just to kind of get them off their back. You're working with a high I as a high S just you guys tend to interact. Well, there's not generally an issue, but try to loosen up just a little bit and have some fun. The high I will actually appreciate that you're putting in the effort. And when working with a high C, uh, they share a need for a cooperative environment and both tend to have strong systems to follow. So they get along in that aspect. Um, when facing change, a high S will generally seek information and then get comfortable um, with the change while a high C will seek data so that they can prove that the change is for the better, right? So it's really the big difference between the two. Well, one of the big differences. You got any high C personalities? Anybody hit the button? Cool. It's only showing me like four people, so I can't even tell if anybody's raising their hand, but let's go for it. The high C oral language. Um, in a consultation, think they're reserved but wakeful posture, sitting further back with a straight body, you know, kind of think of that. They're not very expressive, particularly when talking about facts, figures, and dollars. They typically won't speak until they've gathered enough information. They want all the information from all the different areas before they're going to spew what they're going to say because they don't want to be wrong. Right. And they want to make sure that they've got all the data points before they can move forward. And uh, this is particularly for like a buyer consult, seller consult. A lot of times they've done a lot of research on the buy sell process, but don't assume that just because you're having an interaction with them and they seem very well versed, don't assume that they know everything because it could be pieces of the puzzle they don't know. That's why you're there. Right. If they knew everything, they'd do it themselves, sort of thing. So with the high C, really listen to their objections and concerns. There's not generally going to be too many, um, but they need to be addressed in depth. And if there is too many, you probably need to brush up on your consultation skills a little bit because you're not hitting what they want to hit, right? Um, you're not always going to get everything out of them. And it's a bit more difficult to get a buyer rep agreement or a listing agreement on what I call the first date, right? They're the hard, for me anyway, it seems like they're the hardest ones to get signed on day one because they want to go back and think about it. They want to talk to somebody about it. They want to pull all the data points together and think on it for an hour before they do it. <clears throat> so let them come back to you with all their questions the next day if needed. If I know the high C is the decision maker, I'm going to give them all the information. I'm not even going to push it. I'm going to ask the question just like a good salesperson would. Hey, are you ready to move forward today? And if they're not, I'm not going to press that button too hard. Their body language in conversation, they tend to be a little bit more reserved, almost closed off. Um, I call it hidden thumbs, right? Their hands in their pocket, behind their back. I'm a high C personality. It's one of my top two. And I tend to do this all the time. When I'm walking around a house, my hands are behind my back. I don't know why I'm doing it. If I'm sitting and standing in a line. My, hand, my thumbs are in my pocket. I don't know why. It just is what it is. They generally have a lower volume to their voice. And they have that uh, thinking phase. Call it RBF, right? Call it what it is. A lot of ICs tend to have RBF, right? Especially in conversation 
when you're an interactive person or something like that, and the high C is just data, and they're just like getting down to the numbers, right? What's RBF? Uh, resting, uh, resting bitch face. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and I did see your chat. You may be both. You may be an I and an S. Um, that's actually pretty common too. For whoever put that in chat, um, I was going to say your name, but I don't want to butcher it. Um, let's see. Tip. You may not get a lot out of them during conversation, but what I've noticed is a lot of times they'll send like a long text or an email after a long conversation. They've had a chance to think things over. So if you ever get that, you just get this like random long text after a consultation or a conversation or something. So generally why a lot of times it might be their high C either coming out or that's their dominant trait. And they're typically thinking as you're talking. So don't feel a need to, to fill in the silence as they think, give them a moment to, to respond. A lot of people, when they see that pause, they want to fill it in with stuff. And uh, I call it feature dumping. Don't feature dump. Oh, hey, well, okay, there's a little bit of silence. Okay, well, did you see how great this was and how awesome the kitchen was and how you don't need to do that. Give the high C a moment to kind of think and, and kind of go through everything. The high C is often task oriented. They seek detail and analysis. And they have a critical eye and a critical nature. These are the most common types of people to be perfectionists or be perceived as a perfectionist. They're generally very methodical and careful with just about everything they do. If you are a high C working with a high D, um, you may have tr trouble communicating with each other because of difference in speed and risk orientation. The D has a little bit higher risk orientation or, or a little bit higher um, in the risk category and the C does not. And then of course, speed is obviously a big difference too. They both generally have high expectations of each other and they would both like to control the environment. So if you are working with the high D, as I see, allow the high D a little bit of room to make them feel like they're in control. Don't give too many facts and figures that would typic, um, that are typically ready to move on before you are. So as you're like throwing out facts and figures and you're like, well, you need this data point, they don't need it, move on, right? A lot of times. When working with a high I, the high I uh, will want the high C to focus more on the people element in most situations. So keep that in your mind as you're thinking about, hey, this, client event has to get done, has to get done. And this time we need to get these things done. They're thinking about, well, the people need to have fun first. Let's, let's start talking about them. Focus on the people and pick up your pace just a little bit in your, uh, your overall thinking process, your overall um, pace in general. And then gain control, but allow a little bit of extra time for appointments for story time. Make sure to reel them back in um, whenever they're you know, kind of jumping off topic. So this is a really big one. Um, a high I has a tendency to drive a high C nuts on occasion because they just want to sit there and chat for 20 minutes. A lot of times a high C is like, I got, I got stuff to do, you know, like I don't, this is great, but can't we talk like in like a month or two, you know, that kind of thing, right? If you're a high C working with an S, you guys tend to communicate relatively easily, just like I kind of mentioned before, you like systems and procedures. Um, just try asking me ask more personal questions than you would before. This will help build that trust. Do I have any questions so far? I see chat, you guys. Shalia, got it. That was easy. Yeah, and that's kind of why we're going over a bunch of this is just so you guys can kind of, kind of see an overall thing. Like when you actively put your mind to the disc, you'll start figuring out people's personality very quickly. In fact, most of the time, I don't even need to hear somebody talk. I, I, I can generally do it just based off body language alone. That's, it's highly inaccurate to do it just from body language, but you can generally kind of figure it out. Are they walking quickly? Are they walking slowly? Are, are they walking with confidence? Do they look like they've got a place to go you know, when they stand there? Are their arms akimbo? Are their legs you know, further spread out? Like all these other things, but then when they talk, it makes it a little bit easier. If you just put a little bit of effort into it, you'll be able to start putting people into these boxes and you'll be like, okay, cool. Well, they're definitely a people-oriented person. So they're an I or an S. And then from there, you can figure out, are they quick thinking or slow thinking, right? Are they, are they more about like, hey, I'm just going to shove information in your face? Or are they stopping to think about it before they talk? And then that's how you know I or an S, right? It's definitely a learned skill, though. Do you have any other questions so far? Andrew, sometimes you can tell, I mean, not always, but even like by their occupation, right? I mean, by their job. Like, I mean, you know, if you walk in, if the person, if they're an engineer, of any kind or they're you know the accountant the you know the the numbers person you know uh, whatever like 
I don't know. What, what are some different jobs that you would see that would fall into a D or an I or an S or C? You know what I mean? Sometimes just by asking, so, so what, tell me about yourselves. What do you do? You know, and you can kind of figure out some things that way, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're 100% right. Like an engineer, definitely a high C trait. Uh, lawyers, accountants, um, a lot of professional jobs that require heavy focus and just task orientation tend to lean a little bit that way. Your S's, greatest example, are nurses and teachers. You know, they want to take care of people around them. Uh, your high eyes, these are the, um, you know, the, the project manager, the, a lot of times HR, a lot of times really anything that gets involved with a lot of people and has a people as social workers tend to fall in this. Um, and then a high D, um, you know, your leaders, your politicians, your um, CEOs. I mean, I, I don't want to lump CEOs because there's a CEO in every single personality trait, but that that's 10 tends to be what people think of. Right. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right. And, and that does kind of help put them in that box too. So it'll definitely help. But Andrew, you know, again, you got to be a little careful there because share if you I don't think you shared this in the very beginning. Share with everybody, you know, with your personality style and what your first broker told you. Or the first person, I don't know if it's your broker or the first person you're gonna be with in real estate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I did mention that a little bit earlier. So it's the whole thing. I took the disc and my first broker was like, Hey man, you're going to be an admin or you're going to be out of the business. So yeah, you were 1000% right, Kathy. You do have to be very careful about lumping people in. And that's why I keep mentioning, like, these are just kind of like rough edges, you know, what you're going to see from people. And at the end of the day, why it's an energy management tool, because yes, you might be a, a high, S personality that is probably the worst personality for slamming the phones for expireds and fizzbos all day. But I promise if you have enough motivation, it doesn't matter. You're just going to get tired a little bit quicker because as you're giving information, as you're making these calls, getting hung them on, getting this rejection, it's not part of who you are generally. And it's not something you like, but it is going to make you better. It doesn't mean you're not, you're not going to be good at that task. It just means you might run out of energy a little bit faster than some people course motivation and and grind and hustle and all of those other key words um, can trump that anytime well and the other careful thing i think we all got to be careful with is you know when you know your personality style when somebody's done that personality style is not to like just pigeonhole your own self into that you know kind of going along with the careers we're talking about well i could never be good at sales because i'm that c personality or whatever you know is the opposite of your personality so you know, we all have that mind, that um, negative voice that we want to listen to in our head sometimes. So, you know, even taking all this information in, you got to be careful not to, you know, say, well, I could never be good at X, Y, Z because I'm this personality. Yeah, 100%. And that's part of part, part of the mold that I want to break is is because I was told that. Um, and, and I will answer your question in a second, Shalia. Um, we're going to get to that. Um, because of that, because of what I was given and told, I was like, well, I'm going to do all the things they told me I couldn't do. I'm going to force myself out of this little bubble um, and, and kind of go into it. So um, yeah, I will get into my disc here in a second and we'll kind of talk about that and we'll talk about some extra things, you know, based on your personality type, different prospecting styles that might be all right for you, might have a little bit more longevity as well. So you guys know this guy, Bill Gates right here. Can anybody guess what his personality is? You guys want to throw that in chat? His main trait, any guesses? Got an S, I've got a D, I've got a crazy, okay. <laughs> an I, an S, another S. What else we got? Got a lot of S's. A CS personality, Jorge. All right, Gwen C. All right. Yes, he is a high C personality, and I would um, I would probably agree with Jorge. I think he's a CS. He might be a CD, which is a pretty rare personality type. Only about 4% of the population is. He might be either one, but I definitely think a CS for sure. Yep, Brian, 100%. What about this person right here? Mr. Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. Got an S. Any other guesses? S, I, S. An I, an S. I definitely think his S is his 
dominating trait, but I do 100% believe he's got a good, healthy amount of eye in his personality as well. He wouldn't have been as openly charismatic and as able to spread his message if he wasn't, I don't believe. <clears throat> what about Miss Oprah? Any guesses on this one? A D and an I, an I and a D, I and a D. Yep, Oprah's an easy one. She's definitely a high I, definitely a big emphasis on the D for sure. And then what about this gentleman here? Yep, lots of Ds, lots of Ds. Pretty obvious ones, why I saved him for last, right? All right, can anybody take a guess on mine? It's a beautiful picture too. So I'm actually gonna throw that on my uh, Tinder profile, I think. Got an SCCS, SC, C, and D. Said it, oh, I thought it said E. I was like, I don't even know what that one is. Yeah, so I'm kind of a, when I, when I made this, I was an SC. Um, when I take this about every six months, the last one I took actually showed my C had now dominated my S. Um, and over time, that's going to happen. Your personality is going to change. I want you guys change from a CS to a DI over the period of about two years because of the role he was in in my company. He was my operations manager. Um, so it forced him to kind of get more aggressive and stuff like that. So it will change over time. Um, I'll show you my older disc. It hasn't changed that much, but I will kind of show you the, the differences here. So natural style here on the right side, this is the one that is you're gonna see the most. Um, Jorge, I, I generally take mine through Tony Robbins, um, but he just started charging for it maybe like six months ago. Um, he, it was free for several years. Um, and so we switched to, um, I want to say it's like discpersonalities.com or something like that. It's not near as good. It's not near as accurate, um, in my opinion, uh, but it still works fairly well. <clears throat> um, so now if you just move these two over, that's essentially how this is moved. The C and the S have switched. Do you notice here on the adapted style? Um, some of my stuff changes. This is very important for me to know. This is more for self-awareness than anything else. And this is a one, one of the big things that a lot of people don't toss or talk about during the disc assessment is the adapted style. And it's so incredibly important because it's going to tell me how I'm going to react when I feel like I'm under pressure, right? So if I'm speaking, let's say like in this situation, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty in my natural state. Right. But if I'm actively in person with a bunch of people, I'm in my adapted state 100 percent because I'm not used to public speaking or whatever. Right. So that's me being under pressure or something like that. But I need to know that because I need to know the differences, because when I'm in a deal, I need to know how my body is reacting, how my my personality is changing based on the situation at hand. So let's take a couple of examples. Look at this. My D is next to none. Right. And then I get in a difficult situation and it triples, right? Now this is it, a 30 D is not, that's not put me in the high D category. It's still the lowest thing on my, on my disc, but I need to know that I do get a little bit more aggressive, which means this is going up and my C is going down, which means I'm getting a little bit more sloppy. I'm not paying attention to the numbers as much. Now this isn't a big enough change for me to really worry about, but it is something I need to put in the back of my mind. So I go to a party, let's say, I know that I'm gonna tame these two down, the big portions of my personality. I'm gonna tame down my high eye and try to become more aggressive. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more like, oh, I gotta go talk to people. I gotta, I'm actively thinking about this stuff when I'm at a party because I'm a, a very heavy introvert, a very high C, right? So when you're taking these, look at these and, and make sure that you're making it a point to know that this is happening. Right. Um, with mine, it doesn't change that much. But with some people's, I've seen some people's change pretty dramatically. I've seen a high S go down next to nothing. Super important for you to know that if you get stressed out, your people caring, the reason why people hired you is going to go right in the garbage. Right. So you need to know that. At least from a self-awareness standpoint, I think it's very important. It's good. <clears throat> um, I guess I should have moved these slides as I was going. So we kind of talked about all this here. Do you have any questions so far? Sorry, I'm going through that. I think one of the things, because, and I've taken the disc test many times in the past. Um, we used to use one also as a color test. So it was red, blue, green, yellow. Yep. Red was the high D, yellow was the high I, 
green was high C, I believe. Blue was S, I think. I might have those two mixed up. But the, one of the things I always talked about was like over time, like you try to become like a chameleon. In other words, like, you know, even though you're going to be high in all these different things, like try working on yourself, that personal development, try and get those to where they over time you balance out more or you can adapt. It doesn't mean you have to, you're always going to maybe like for me, I'm always going to be high D. You know, whatever. it's just in me, just go, go cut to the chase. Like, let's do it when at all costs, you know, whatever. Um, but to be able to adapt that as I need to, you know, and especially working with other people, you know, because again, like when I had my team, my real estate team, it's like, I really had to learn that, you know, cause I could just steamroll over people, you know, and, and it's not good, you know, whatever. Next thing you know, you're like, you know, you're the enemy of the team and you don't want to be that. So I had to adapt. I was, it was funny because back in the day, before I got into real estate, I was in ministry. And when I tested back then, high eye, yellow was off the chart. You know, that high eye thing it was people, 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 you know, and then I became a realtor and it's like, all of a sudden now, you know, my wife was, you know, home with the kids. It was all on me, 100% commission. My D like exploded, like, you know, and just so again, over time, learning to how to balance those things out. And especially when it comes to building a team or with working with clients, you know, how, and that's, I think what's so good about really figuring this out as you go into meeting with listing appointments and buyer appointments, all that stuff, to be able to connect with these people based on who they are, not on just who you are, come in there steamrolling, you know, whatever you can connect. And next thing you know, you know they're, they're going to hire you because a lot of agents won't pay any attention to this stuff. You know, it's just my way or the highway. This is how we're doing things, you know, whatever. And you, you can do that, but you can do it in a way where you connect with the people. And now that, you know, they're, they're signing the papers. I want to work with you. You're the guy. Yeah, you're, you're hundred percent right. Like the, the self-awareness portion of the disc is probably the biggest thing that I ever learned from it. Um, especially coming from my background, you know, um, it, it's so funny that you say that adjusting your personality type and trying to figure out how to be a chameleon and fit in all of those. It's so funny you say that because I joke all the time, whenever somebody has got a low portion, mine's the D. So forgive that this is going to sound terrible. I call it putting whatever that personality is on the table. So if your eye is really low and you're about to step into a party, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm like, Hey, you're going to have to stick your eye on the table tonight. Like you drop it on the table. Right. So for, for me, I'm saying it all the time. I'm like, I'm, I'm having to drop my D on the table. Like I'm just having to get more aggressive and uh, sorry if it's vulgar, it just is what it is. Like, and that's just what I call it. I'm like, cool today. Like I've got to, I've got to have a tough conversation with somebody. I'm going to have to lay my D on the table. Right. And it's exactly that Jeff, it's trying to figure out where to put those pieces together so that you can best communicate with your clients. Because if you stick, I promise you, if you stick to your personality, your personality only, and you don't adjust, you're going to lose probably one quarter of your business guaranteed just by Absolutely. personality differences. Without question. One of the things I'll throw this out too, and again, not to jump ahead, Andrew, you might have some of this in there, but like when I had my team, one of the things I learned, you know, and again, part of Craig Proctor's program, he had a whole big section on the disc test and that's what he used. So we would, you know, I learned to hire people onto my team. I would give them a test. I remember running an ad, we're hiring our first assistant, you know? And so I bring in, you know, here's 10, 10, 11, 12 people that all respond to this ad. So I bring them all into our office at the same time we met in a conference room kind of, I explained the position. Here's what I want to do. And the very, it was a quick, pretty quick meeting. The first thing I did was I handed them all a disc test and they all took the disc test, we bring paper and pen, whatever. And they all went through it. And then I sent them all home, you know, whatever. And then we were going to grade those tests because I'm hiring an assistant. So I needed, I needed that C. I needed the detail person, the person that would be willing to sit at a computer all day and answer emails and do this kind of stuff, whatever. Um, you know, sending out all our mailings that we had, all that kind of stuff. It was the CS, like those, that was the personality type. If I'm getting an I and a D, like that's just not for that position that I'm looking to hire. And so I would narrow it down. Here was the three people that really fit that. So now I'd bring them in and do that personal interview and thank all the rest for coming and, you know, everything else. But, and then, so that assistant that I hired using that disc test, she was with me for nine years. She was phenomenal, you know? And so same with buyer agents you know you want the you know the eye I, I want a prime that eye needs to be up there pretty high because they got to be a people person if yeah. i'm hiring a buyer agent you know whatever they got to have that patience and love people you know my my wife is high eye she loves working with the people and the people love her 
she connects with them. You know, for me, I'm like, again, like I wasn't great with the buyers. I would do it, but oh my God, like make a decision already. <laughs> you know, three houses, which one do you want? We're not going to look at 10, you know, whatever. My wife will work with all of them. I mean, it's just, but having to figure some of that out along the way and just hiring the right people, you know, for those different positions that you're trying to fill can make such a huge difference, not burning through people. And, you know, three months in, you're pulling your hair out, whatever. And you hired the wrong person and I got to fire him and find the next one knowing how to test them and, and read those people just is huge for that stuff, you know? So good to know. Yeah. Good and it's going to gonna increase longevity in the position too, right? Oh, so totally. Like I hired a, an IS for my um, ISA once upon a time and she did great. Are you kidding? Two people type personalities. It was outstanding Yeah. for like six months. And then she started getting burnt out and she was crying and she was getting upset and people, all the rejection was finally getting to her and all that stuff. And it was like, well, here's where a little bit of D would come in handy or even a little bit of C, a little bit of task orientation yeah. so that they can step back and go, it's not about people cursing me out and hanging up the phone and all this other stuff, even though they signed up on our website, which I still can't believe people are like that, but it is what it is. Um, a little bit of D would, would have gone, um, done wonders for her longevity, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Prospecting strengths. I know we're kind of running out of time here um, for the high D personality or free and cheap versions. Um, and a lot of these are going to be the basic stuff, guys. So I'm not going into like geofencing and Google LSA or any of the new stuff that's coming out, TikTok, any of that stuff. It's going to be kind of basic stuff and you can kind of tailor it from there. But your door knocking, circle prospecting, farming, FISBOs, expired. These are all generally pretty good for a high D personality. They're great at getting that rejection out of the way and just moving on, right? So cold calling, the same kind of thing, door knocking, cold calling, kind of mix those into the same boat. Um, your videos, um, Facebook lives, video testimonials, pro video, stuff like that will work. Um, TikTok, for those of you guys that are jumping on there, ID can actually do this fairly well because you're task oriented. You're not going to look at it and be like, well, I look stupid. I'm not going to place this. Just, just send it, right? So ID is going to be a little bit better in the start of that. Um, and then creating networking groups around a hobby can be a very easy one for a high D uh, because a hobby is a little bit more task oriented. If you're doing anything paid, leverage, I mean, leverage could be on any personality, right? But hired out anything that you don't specialize in. If you were good at slamming the, the cold calling, the, you know, and, and the phone numbers, then you need to hire everything else around that right? You need somebody that's putting the list together for you. You need somebody that's setting up the dialer for you, whatever, right? As you're growing, right? You don't need to do this right in the beginning, but as you're growing. Online ads, these are great for a high D personality because it's, it's about speed to lead on a lot of them, particularly with the Realtor and Zillow, if you guys are paying for any of those. Um, prospecting through predictive analytics programs, Smart Zip, or any of those other ones they have out there that check, you know, internet activity to figure out who's going to go because these are straight up cold calls. They don't know why you're calling. You just got information from a database that says this person might be moving soon, right? So if any of you guys are using any of that, and then again, videos, if you want to throw some money at these, um, you can definitely do that as a high D. For a high I, your local meetups, so think social leagues, Toastmasters, meetup.com. Um, I don't know what this one year thing is, but it's apparently there. But um, this is what I did for one of my high eyes that had moved from a different state. He didn't know uh, too many people here. So I got him in a social league, one of these drinking leagues, right? You go out there and you play kickball for an hour and you just drink and have a good time. And we still get business to, to this day from that. And that was like four or five years ago. So a great, um, great thing. I went there with them for two years. It was pretty good. We still keep in touch with a bunch of them, but network with your referral partners, uh, back and forth referrals, insurance, banking, you know, and then of course all the big ones, your lenders, your insurance, you know, all of that stuff. But think outside the box too, with all of your other people. Uh, Hi, I would be very good at getting all of these people kind of together and then creating almost like a, your own little business mi mastermind sort of thing. Just add a little bit of uh a little bit of uh, what do you call it uh, organization to it because the high eye does tend to be a little bit disorganized but as long as you throw it in your calendar you stick to it you can definitely set something up like this um, open houses real big one for high eyes that's like my favorite one for high eyes you got i as your your top two i'm shoving you to do open houses because you guys are great in person um, you can door knock the neighborhood consider multiple short open houses versus one long um, I'm kind of torn on this because we've experimented with doing like three open houses in one day 
And we didn't see that much of a difference in doing one three hour one. So I'm still kind of torn on that, but I'll throw it out there in case anybody wants to try it out. Uh, your Facebook lives, video testimonials, blogs, anything that doesn't have a set schedule would be a little bit better. So um, just keep that in mind, right? If you're gonna try to stick to a super strict schedule as a high eye, you're, you're probably, you might have some issues with that. Um, so paid different versions. Uh, host booths at festivals. Again, you guys are great in person, partnering with vendors for added benefit. Uh, when you're doing your open house, if you can get a lender there, that really helps. Run ads on videos that perform well. So as you're throwing out these videos, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Reels, wherever, wherever it is, Facebook, um, when you get one that's clicking, throw it into the ad network, right? Throw some bucks on it. Uh, pop buys and past client gifts. Take care of your past clients for an high eye, especially. That's really big. And past client events, larger hangouts, um, parties, you know, do a, a Super Bowl party every year, do a Game of Thrones. I remember when Game of Thrones was popular. I had one of my agents just do a Game of Thrones party every week. She had so much business. It was silly. Uh, just from inviting, it was like, okay, cool. The core eight people are invited. And then she was like, everybody bring a friend. And every week they would bring new friends. And it was, uh, it was a pretty big deal. Got her a lot of business from that. My S, your free and cheap versions, one-on-one -on -one lunches, lunches and coffees, uh, stack if able. Anybody read that book, uh, Seven Levels of Communication? If you are a high S personality, you should, you should own that book. You should know every word of that book because that is a game changer. It was actually the single thing that took me from 36 sales personally to up over 60. Um, all I did was use the, the tactics in that because I'm, well, was a high S and I guess I'm kind of a high C now. Um, but these one-on-one -on -one lunches, it's, yeah, seven levels by Mike, my, my, right on. Kim's got it in chat there for you. Outstanding book for high S's. Good for anybody, but those one-on-one -on -one lunches are really good. I did this for a year and just watched my business explode. And it was great because I was only dealing with people I liked. It was awesome. Um, call your existing sphere of influence. The high S has this amazing way with their sphere of influence. The I does too. Any of the people-oriented people, -oriented people uh, people oriented people, um, but use your sphere of influence are going to really, really help you. Uh, social media outreach, I call it my Facebook five by five by five. Um, that's basically going on to any of your social platforms, doing five comments, five interactions, and five personal messages. You can do this on Insta, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, this is great for a high S because they get to be behind a shield, right? The shield of the internet, but they're still prospecting directly, right? So it's not going to be near as good as picking up the phone or doing one-on-ones, right? There's a hierarchy. In fact, uh, Michael uh, mentions that in his Seven Levels book, a hierarchy of where everything's at. Uh, but it's definitely a good thing that if done consistently can do pretty good things. There was a Keller Williams agent. I learned this strategy from way back in the day. This is all she did for years. She became one of the top hundred uh, people in, in Keller Williams, obviously after she grew a team and stuff, but that was the main thing that she did. Volunteer, use your passion um, and close relationships for like-minded people. Um, and then for your paid versions, online ads, Realtor, Zillow, Facebook, any of the online ads are a little bit easier for an IS or for an S personality because they're warmer leads than doing something like cold calling. Donate regularly. Um, just make sure that's paired with trying to prospect in the process, right? Don't just throw money to throw money unless it's something that you wanna do for your business, right? Philanthropy wise. Run awareness ads um, and constant social media ads if you can do it. It's very hard for an S to be able to throw their face out there like that a lot of times, but if you can get over that and throw it out there, it does, uh, it can do very well because the high S tends to come across very genuine. Like they're actually trying to help because they actually are trying to help normally. Right, so small intimate get togethers, think game night. I had one of my agents do that for a long time. He, he literally just brought game night over. He'd have one of his buddies and then they would bring a couple more people. They'd have eight people or six people, I can't remember, every weekend. And uh, it took a little while, but once it started rolling, he started getting all this extra business from other people. So drinks out could be a thing. If you, you like going out and drinking, you like going out and doing puzzles, go do puzzles, whatever it is. But small intimate gatherings tend to be pretty good. And then if you can drive traffic to your website, oncoming or incoming lead flow, um, this is a little bit more on the high C personality, I think, um, but it does help bring in those warm leads, which do feel a little bit better for the S2 prospect. And then for a C, um, organized meetups around hobbies, very similar thing. In fact, the, the personality style, the guy I just mentioned with the game night, he was a CS or an SC personality. Um, create powerful and personable email and mail campaigns. This is, we could put, that whole block right there and just put systems. 
the high C, one of the greatest things that, that, that we can do is build systems. So build everything out, make everything as automated as possible so that you don't have to worry about that great email you're going to send. It's done for you. Uh, create content on your website, social media, blogs, next door, market insights. Um, some of these were from a different, uh, a different thing, but basically creating content in general in the written form um, is generally pretty good for IC. Social media outreach, I talked about this Facebook five by five by five already. Online ads, same thing, just like an S. Um, home selling, investing, buyer seminars. I'm still really torn on this. I haven't figured out a way to do these buyer seminars or investment seminars in any decent capacity, even as a high C myself. But if you are in an area where you've got the skill to be able to push out the word for this, this would be a very powerful thing for IC to do. Um, and if you guys don't have like a real estate investment group in your area, this would be a really good one for IC to start as well. Uh, create and run ads for guides on selling, buying, investing, and social or investing on social media. So create a bunch of guides. People love guides. You start getting on any of these other social platforms, TikTok Reels, and all of a sudden you can throw stuff. You can throw backlinks in there to get people onto your website to start building that relationship. And then mailers is a nice way for IC because they're again behind the wall. Do we have any questions on that? For those of you guys building a team, um, I'm not going to go over single over every single one of these, and these aren't set in stone, as as Jeff and I were kind of discussing earlier. Uh, but they do kind of help you. That that EA that he was talking about, or that transaction coordinator, that SC is definitely where you want to be, or CS, your showing assistant in IS. If you are going to build the showing assistant model, uh, you just want them to be people oriented. Nothing else really matters, right? Uh, listing lead, listing agent, DI, lead buyers. You want the IS or the ID, just like Jeff said earlier. You want that high I in there. It's definitely super important. They need to be people, people. Um, your inside sales agent, a DI is generally the best. I did find my favorite was the IS. I'm not going to lie on this, um, but for longevity purposes, I just don't think that they are going to withstand that job for a very long time. If you have a lead coordinator or a webmaster, CS is good. And then an agent associate, it's going to do anything. You can really use any of these three, but again, you notice they all have the I in there. I think the I is probably the most valuable asset for a real estate professional. Uh, we're not going to go through all of that. Conflict resolution. You guys can take a screenshot of this or I can send it to you after the fact if you want. This is just something very easy that I kept on my desk for years. It's not mine. I completely ripped this off. So, you know, please don't try to make any money off of it because it's not mine. Um, but it's super easy that you guys can just look at this and go, okay, cool. I'm a high C. So my, my style here is a C and I'm having a conflict with a high D, big surprise. So I look at their personality and I go through here and it just tells me be direct. Don't get caught up in the details. Got it. So I actually used to keep this at the corner of my desk and um, you guys can't see it, but at the edge of all of our desks here on my team, we all keep the disc assessment. So I could look at that and go, okay, cool. I'm having a conflict right now, or I need to talk to a high eye about something. I can just glance down here. Now I don't need to do that anymore, but it's a very good tool for you guys to kind of use so that you can go at a glance. If you're about to make that phone call to that listing agent, that just sent sort of a butthole and you know that they're a high, I don't know, C personality and you're an I and they're coming across like a butt. Okay, cool. Do this. Focus on the facts and the, uh, the facts of the problems. Use logic and restrain your emotion. So instead of calling and going, I don't understand why your seller won't. Nope. Stop and go, hey, here are the facts. We're past this deadline. What are we going to do about it? Got it. Cool. Conversation is going to go a lot smoother. You can eliminate so much with just something as easy as this. And can, you little... can you send me that, Andrew? And I'll put it up on the, the workplace group. Yep. Will do. That'd be awesome. Just, you know, email it to me, whatever. Yep, I'll do it as soon as we hang up here. Cool. <clears throat> and then I'm not going to go into the values index. It's, um, we don't really have time for that. And it's not all that important on there. Um, but that's essentially um, everything I've got for this. What questions do you guys have? What, what can we go over? What are you guys thinking? It's really good stuff. Thoughts, comments, questions, guys? Super valuable. I I did the same thing Jeff did a long time ago, where it was color, not this. But uh, that index card, I think, is very helpful resource, especially calling or connecting with uh, people. You just you know, first glance, whether it's a listening appointment or whatever, and taking those social cues, like you said, I, I think that's very valuable. Definitely. Can you guys see how this could help you? Like, I mean, just to learn this, learn these different types, like just walking into an appointment. 
meeting with people the first time and even throughout the process of the deal, you know, I mean, it can get, you know, it can get crazy during in the deal, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're dealing with, you know, the inspection resolution and some of these kind of things and whatever to know those personality types and how to speak into that. I mean, it can make for much smoother transitions and a lot more deals. I mean, you just get people that you connect with and so many agents won't pay any attention to this stuff. seems like such a little thing, you know, why well, connect with everybody? It's like, you know, just, Learn this stuff because it can make a huge difference in terms of the number of people that want to work with you. And you want people that want to work with you. You know, if it's like this the whole time, it's like, that's just, that's painful, you know, and it doesn't have to be. And you're never going to get referrals from that. You know, how many referrals will you get even from just learning this and connecting like, oh my God, my agent was, it was the best thing, best experience I ever had. You know, they've sold four homes, but this last one, my goodness, you know, when I worked with Michael, Michael just, oh man, what a great guy. And next thing you know, you're getting more deals because they're referring you out like that, learning how to deal with those people. Any questions, comments before we go? Good. Good stuff. Andrew, thank you so much. Yeah, totally absolutely. appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. So um, guys, we will let you know, just be aware. We, we may or may not be on here next Tuesday. We'll make that decision here in the next day or so. A lot of us are going to be at shareholders in Orlando. I'm taking off actually tomorrow for Orlando. i um, got some meetings down there beforehand, but um, you know, I know a lot of the icons, especially are going to be down there. They have to be there for their, you know, for the stock award and different things, but the, you know, good to be there anyway. But um you know, we, we may not be on next Tuesday. We will let you know that, though, uh, for sure. If not, we'll be back the following week. But um, just pay attention to the workplace group. We'll have that decision on there in the next day or so. OK, so uh, but anyway, Andrew, thank you again, guys. Thanks for being on. Appreciate it. Always. Um, we will see you again here soon. This recording will be up on workplace uh, here in the next couple hours. OK, uh, good stuff. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. OK, thanks, everybody.